Hare Krishna, everyone. So, welcome you all to HSR Bhakti Center. This is called Seshadri Puram. Uh, presents. Uh, today, we will see the seventh chapter summary. Okay. So, I think we have already seen till six chapters. Right. So, till six chapters is the Karma Yoga section. Right. So, in the Karma Yoga section, basically, we have seen how to perform karma. Right. So, there are two almost full chapters. You know, Krishna has covered in teaching us how the karma can be done. Right. And then a transcendent list can actually follow, a transcendent list can actually follow many paths to reach the Supreme Lord. Okay. So out of which the Dhyana Yoga is also one of the path. So maybe Krishna has explained the complete chapter, Dhyana Yoga in chapter 6, we have seen in full detail. Then at the end, what he established is Dhyana Yoga is not something that an ordinary person in this age can be, you know, easily taken up. And uh, he has, uh, with examples, he has given that, you know, Dhyana Yoga, people are there who can achieve perfection with the Dhyana Yoga, but it's almost impossible, right? Even Arjuna mentioned the same thing, right? I can even catch hold of the air but I can't control my mind. Right? So mind is the major, uh, you know, major thing in Dhyana Yoga, which we cannot control. So Mataji said she has been practicing Dhyana Yoga for almost seven years, six years, two to three years. So after uh, practicing for three, two to three years, Mataji should get concentration on in meditation, maybe for two minutes two minutes and in this in that two minutes also if some some big sound comes or some bills disturbs she will be out <laughs> so so it is not that easy so there are so many yogis who have performed this kind of uh, dhyana yoga and uh, you know many lifetimes they have performed and they realize that it is not possible and we have taken an example of vishwamitra we have taken an example of saubar muni okay saubar muni he was a great sage okay what happened to him? He went into the Yamuna river and sat for thousands of years to perform Dhyana on Supreme Lord. And what happened? He has seen two fishes interacting each other intimately. So then he felt that he also has to enjoy. Then he came out of this meditation and he went out and he married 100 girls. And then, uh, you know, he has become young. Although he was a old person who was having a white beard, everything. But he went and he asked a king who can offer 100 of his daughters and then he could marry them and then he has started Gruhastha life. So, so are we better or greater than Sobar Muni? No. Are we greater than uh, or, uh, you know, are we having mind control compared to uh, Vishwamitra? No. Vishwamitra also could not control his mind. Right? He has given up at one point of time when Banaka came and made his her bangle sounds and then Vishwamitra came out of Dhyana and then he has given a baby. Okay. So that is the situation we have seen. That's why Krishna has concluded at the end of the chapter that out of all yogis, Dhatti Yogi is the topmost. Okay. And we know, we, we understood that we have to give up everything in our uh, material uh, life. You have to give up your family, you have to give up your desires, you have to give up your ex uh, jobs, you have to give up all your activities and stop your uh, sense activities and go to the secluded place and then sit and then meditate on one focus on one object and that object should be Paramatma. Right? And whereas uh, if you compare the uh, Bhakti Yoga with Dhyana Yoga in Bhakti Yoga you give up anything. In Bhakti Yoga you can sit with your family you can have three times prasad daily. <laughs> uh, and uh, once in a while, Prabhuji comes and then they will do Kirtan. We can dance in the Kirtan. And uh, after dancing, we can hear lecture. And then we can have a prasadam. And then we enjoy the prasadam and we go home. So this is Bhakti Yoga. Now we concluded that the Bhakti Yoga is practice is very easy compared to Dhyana Yoga practice. That's why Krishna is telling that even if you perform Dhyana, you may or may not be able to 
get the perfection but if you, if you are a devotee you are for sure you will get the perfection right now this is the conclusion of the sixth chapter right now we enter into the seventh chapter before entering into the seventh chapter let us take darshan of istan sheshadripuram details uh, jai jagannath jai baldev jai shubhadra mai sudarshan bhagwan ki jai panch tatva ki jai swaman dev ki jai parshram bhagwan ki jai let's all start the prayers ओम ज्ञानतिरांधस्य ज्ञानांजनाशलाकया चक्षुरन्मीलित तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमा ओं विष्णुपाय कृष्ण प्रेष्टा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदाता स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधरा श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त बृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे लेट डेडिकेट दिस सेशन टू हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ऐसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी शील प्रभा शील प्रभा की सो आई रिमेम्बर one thing about the shila prabhupad shila prabhupad when he was in vrindavan there were uh, some chaturvedi and dvivedi trivedi kind of people came and uh, so dvivedi means the people have studied two vedas trivedi means people who are familiar on three vedas chaturvedi means they are familiar in all four vedas they have you can ask any question in any of the vedas they will answer okay that means they are pandits they are gnanis they know all vedas so so much pandits came then they met first time shila prabhupad and shila prabhupad was very happy to see such a you know scholars okay then he then they they, they started claiming what is your qualification to prabhupad and prabhupad said i am not qualified anything so what are you doing here i am preaching about krishna how are you doing this my spiritual master has given me my this energy and with that energy with my spiritual master is talking through me i am not speaking anything then he said no oh, you may not be knowing anything but we know all four vedas so we are better than you you are we are greater than you then krishna uh, then prabhupada asked him okay you know all vedas now i will ask you one question can you answer okay so then prabhupada has asked them who is god who is god then chaturvedis trivedis dvivedis they were uh, you know it's a big question and it is very difficult to define who is god and i'll try to explain you what is god and then they started talking paragraphs and paragraphs paragraphs and paragraphs for half an hour <laughs> because they describe the god these qualities these that so everything they are trying to tell about the god then prabhupada stopped them and if i don't stop you you may continue for another half an hour one hour two hours so then he immediately called one small boy who was chanting there and then he called and asked him okay then he asked who is god and then the boy answered krishna is god so that simple if you are a devotee you can easily understand who is god you don't have to you know complete your all four vedas to understand who is god and at the same time today we are going to understand who is god okay because we krishna has established in first six chapters that the bhakti yogi is the topmost yogi that's what krishna is mentioning in the next uh seventh chapter onwards uh, you know krishna is going to talk about bhakti only because up to sixth chapter it is all karma yoga and dhyana yoga now he is going to talk about bhakti bhakti yoga he is going to talk so before you start bhakti you should understand to whom you have to perform bhakti right you should understand who is god why i should really perform bhakti why i really need to be in devotion okay this you need to understand so 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 that's what krishna is going to tell us in seventh chapter so let us all understand the no, the name of the seventh chapter is the knowledge of the absolute what is absolute the absolute everything so there is no other knowledge which can be better beyond this 
okay superlative degree right so once you know about this there is nothing else that you need to know that's why he says here the knowledge about the absolute so once you know about the absolute knowledge then you will be convinced about who is krishna and why you really need to do devotional service for krishna right that's why krishna is trying to establish himself here so this i have told you in the sixth chapter ending krishna has confirmed that yogi nam api sarvesham madhate nantaratmana shraddhavan bhajate yomam same yukta tamo madha okay so krishna is telling that out of all yogis the greatest yogi is the one who is in full consciousness of me who is completely in the devotional service to me who is mind is completely occupied by my thoughts whose activities are completely for me whose uh, thinking is for me whose offerings are for me everything is for me okay such an yogi is the top most yogi he said after telling all about dhyana yogi he said bhakti yogi is the top most okay so now we need to understand what is bhakti yogi okay so now bhagavan is going to talk krishna is going to talk first of all krishna is going to talk he did not even wait for arjuna to question right when he wanted to tell about bhakti and it is most exciting for even krishna so he will not even wait for arjuna to question right <laughs> if we see in all other chapters first arjuna question then krishna answer right so he did not wait for arjuna to answer you don't have to answer what you need okay i will tell you what you need okay shri bhagavan uvacha maya shakta manah padha yogam yunjan yada ashraya asamshayam samagram mam yadha jnasya sitat shrunu the supreme personality of the godhead said now here osana pratha how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me with mind attached to me you can know me in full free from doubt so krishna is going to tell about himself if you want to know about somebody whom should you approach what is the authentic source if you want to know about me <laughs> if you don't approach me and you try to approach somebody else and trying to know about me then what happens it becomes speculation right because the knowledge about me is the top most knowledge and uh, no one knows internals no one knows about what i really know about me right so krishna is going to tell, tell about himself there is no other authentic source than this compared to knowing about krishna from anybody else so that's why krishna is telling here tat shunu shunu means listen shravan okay so shunu is the one of the first devotional service shravanam okay there are nine ways of devotional service that you can perform and the one of the devotional service that you can perform is shravanam okay so if you don't hear you cannot know about krishna the example rukmini devi rukmini has not seen krishna ever but she developed love for krishna and she fought against her family for krishna although she has not seen krishna ever right so why why because always her brother rukmi used to talk about krishna because rukmi was envious about krishna right he always used to plan to kill krishna along with jarasandha right so jarasandha has enmity on krishna he always used to think about how to kill krishna so two enemies becomes friends right so if 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 the enemy of enemy becomes friend to me almost <laughs> so jarasandha and uh, rukmi has become friends because they both are enemy for krishna okay and even sishupala obviously because sishupala want to marry rukmini and rukmini want to marry krishna so obviously sishupala was already having enmity on krishna because when sishupala has born he was born with four hands and uh, some special eye on his forehead 
so then krishna has removed his divinity he felt this is the divinity and uh, his mo his mother said you know he looks abnormal <laughs> i don't want my son to be having four hands and three eyes so make him normal then krishna actually there was a boon or something so it was said you know you give your son to everybody's hand after your son reach to somebody's hand if you he, he loses all his four hands and then he loses his uh, third eye then that person is the killer of your son <laughs> okay so then uh, after uh, shishpala was taken by krishna he lost his four hands he becomes normal two handed form and then he lost his third eye so then then they decided that the krishna is going to kill shishpala so from then onwards shishpala has get enmity on krishna <laughs> right the shishupala used to always show enviousness and talk uh, you know rubbish about krishna always right so then shishupala's mother was aunt to krishna so shishupala mother was unhappy so i got one only son and you are going to kill him so how can i live without my son then krishna said okay don't worry i will wait for he doing 100 mistakes okay if he crosses the 100 mistakes then i will kill him till then he is safe okay then he has grown and he is counting krishna is counting his 100 mistakes okay <laughs> so then uh, that is the enmity i put the uh, krishna on uh, on krishna for uh, shishupa so these three people started talking bad about krishna and these all you know uh rukmini was hearing okay rukmini was there in the rukmi's uh, kingdom and uh, shishupala and janasandha they come here and then they plan their war you know uh, techniques all these things so one day they will go for war with krishna at the end they could not kill krishna they come back and they discuss about what is wrong what is right about the war <laughs> what went wrong what went right and they started discussing when they started discussing what went wrong what went right then, uh, so here okay they say today krishna has done some magic okay he simply you know escaped from uh, just in a while okay otherwise i could have killed krishna okay he is uh, having a great uh, you know knowledge and he knows what is going to happen and he somehow escaped so every day something or other krishna is doing and they are discussing about krishna uh, rukmi's house and then rukmini got attracted to krishna in that way listening 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 about krishna rukmini got attracted to krishna and rukmini developed love for krishna and her love has gone to an extent that krishna has all the way came to rukmini and then rukmini was taken along with him okay and he married also rukmini so that is the power of hearing okay so if you hear about krishna today you will also develop love for krishna are you all ready yeah okay so let us all hear what krishna is going to tell about himself okay manushyanam sahasreshu kaschit etatis dhame yatatam api siddhanam kaschit mam veti tatvatah उटली you understand the rarity of the people rarity of the people who knows about krishna right that's why we are only 15 20 people here <laughs> who wants to know about krishna we are one among thousands right we are one among thousands so krishna is clearly mentioning it is not easy to know about me that's the reason people don't believe krishna don't have faith about krishna they question about krishna why krishna is god he is normal man he is a cowherd person right he he is uh, he might be having some mystic powers but otherwise he is normal he has taken birth for some 
mother, some father, and he lived somewhere, and he has lived his life all the way like a, a cowherd boy, and then he went to Madura. Somehow he has some mystic powers. He could kill Kamsa. So how can I believe that Krishna is God? Right? Because Krishna himself telling that nobody understands me. Nobody knows me. Even Krishna himself does not know him. <laughs> That's what even uh, Srimad Bhagavatam talks. Right? Even God does not know about him. If you go and ask Ambani, what is your property? What is your assets? What is the worth, net worth? What will he say? So he has to count what is there, his net worth in his bank, his shares, his stocks, his uh, company profits, his uh, uh, you know liabilities, everything he has to calculate and he will say, oh, okay, I came to know that 200 crores is my net worth. <laughs> then the moment he calculates and he makes that his count, his net worth is the 200 crores, by then he must have earned something and interests, interests that could have got added in the banks and uh, maybe some profits got added and his net worth must have got increased by 250 crores by then. By the time he calculated his net worth, his net worth could have been increased by 50 crores extra. Right? Money makes money, right? <laughs> money makes money. In the same way, by the time Krishna says what I am, he will expand for it. <laughs> and he does not know even in full what he is. And then when Krishna himself cannot tell about what he is, how can we speculate about it? Right? It's not easy. That's why Krishna is telling, it's not easy for people to become my devotee. It's not easy to for people to surrender unto me. It's not easy for people to, to have a faith on me and worship me. Right? And if anybody is worshipping, they are, they are one among thousands. Right? They are one among thousands. And we need to understand what Krishna is all about. Why we cannot understand Krishna? What is Krishna is all about? So, actually Krishna is the source of all material and spiritual energies. Okay? So, the material energy is what? This prakriti, this nature is the Krishna's external energy. Krishna's external energy. The way I am talking, right? The, my energy is coming out. Right? If I don't deliver my energy, you cannot hear me. So in the same way, Krishna has delivered his energy externally and that external energy is manifested as material world. In this material world, we all are there. Our body, souls, everything, this nature, prakriti, everything is there. Even demigods, devatas. Right? Everybody is there. And Krishna is telling that this material nature is made up of five gross elements and three subtle elements. What are those five gross elements? Earth, water, fire, air, ether. Okay. These are the five gross elements with which our body is made up. But are we this body? In the second chapter we have seen we are not this body. And who are we? We are not this body. Okay, if we are not this body, which is made up of five gross elements, which you can see, which you can feel, there can be three subtle elements. Mind, intelligence, false ego. Mind. Do you say that I don't have mind? Can anybody say that you don't have mind? No, right? We have mind. We have intelligence. And we also have an ego. So we all have it. But can you see that? Can you feel it? Can you touch it? Can you see it? You can, but you cannot say that you don't have mind, you don't have intelligence, you don't have false ego. Right? That means we are made up of mind, ego, and intelligence also. But are we mind? Are we intelligence? Are we false ego? No. We are still something more. What is that? That something is living entity. That something is the soul. But is the soul material? Because we are in this material world, are we material? Oh, Krishna said everything that is you know manifested externally is material. Material, my material energy, my external energy. So we are also not material. Our body is material, but we are not material. We are spiritual. 
So Krishna clearly clarified in this chapter that the living entity is superior over the material energy. Right? A material energy is the, this nature. Living entity is actually we. We are superior to the material energy. Although we are superior to material energy, we are in this material energy. So we are contaminated and we are thinking we are this body. We are thinking everything that body belongs is mine. This hand is mine. This relation is mine. He is my wife. She is, he is my brother. He is my sister. Okay, this laptop is mine. This TV is mine. This mine, mine concept started. Nothing is mine. Because we are not material. We are spiritual. That's why Krishna has said that you are superior over material energy. You are superior over material energy. Spiritual energy is superior over material energy. But due to the contamination, we are exploiting this material nature. What are we doing? We are exploiting this material nature. We are using this material nature more than our needs. True or not? Right? For one person to live, how much is required? Are we satisfied with what we have? No. We are running every day. Right? So that's why Krishna is telling, although we are superior, we are trapped in this inferior energy. We are trapped in this inferior energy. So we have to understand that we should not be trapped in material energy. We should not be trapped in this inferior energy. Being a superior person, you should not be trapped in this, in this material nature. So that's why Krishna said there is another nature which is beyond this material nature and which is the actual abode of us, all of us. What is that? Spiritual nature. That is the spiritual nation, Vaikuntha planets. So Krishna, before telling himself, he started talking about his dharma. Right? His place, his abode, he is talking about. So he says, one who is in this material nature will suffer. Who is not suffering? Everybody is suffering. We can't sit for 10 minutes. Already we started getting pain here. You can't sit down. <laughs> Okay, so uh, some Prabhupada came and sat here, see here, because they can rest their, you know, <laughs> back. <laughs> yes, we are all suffering materially, bodily problems, mental problems, stress, everything we have. There is no one, even the millionaire, trillionaire is suffering because we are in this suffering world. <laughs> the world itself is defined as Dukhalaya. Okay, so. So, Krishna is telling, I am the source of material energy. I am the source of spiritual energy. I am the source of even the spirit soul. Okay. So, we being a spirit soul, souls are part and parcel of Krishna. Part and parcel of Krishna. So, your hand is a part and parcel of you. Your leg is a part and parcel of you. What is your leg and hand doing? Are they independent? What are they doing? They are serving you. Right? Hand is used for what? Right? It is serving our stomach. Okay. So, if hand says, I want to enjoy away from my master, <laughs> what will happen? You will cut your hand and throw it away. Then what will happen? Your hand will be happy? Enjoy? No. As long as the hand is connected with the it can really enjoy. Right? By feeding, by serving. If you are getting a pain somewhere, hand has to massage there. Right? <laughs> so, some or other way, this hand, leg, body parts are serving us. In the same way, when Krishna is telling that everything is the, coming from me, emanates from me. Everybody is a source. Source is me. Okay? So, when we know about our source, what is our duty? What is our duty supposed to be? We have to serve Krishna. We have to serve our source. Right? We have to serve our source. That's why Krishna is telling here. Mata parataram nanya kinchi dasti dananjaya. Mata 
मयि सर्वमिधम प्रोतम सूत्रे मणिगणाइवा एनर्जी just like the way the strung in the pearls necklace krishna is holding everything krishna is the source of everything that's what he is saying there is no truth truth superior to me there is no truth superior to me once if you know this truth there is nothing else superlative okay there is nothing else so that's why krishna is comparing so that if you know if you don't give if you don't get an analogy you cannot relate you cannot understand that's why he is giving us with a necklace pearls necklace we all can easily relate okay so the earth is moving on its own orbit all other planets are moving on its own orbit we think that these planets and the earth is moving at their own pace in their own orbit and if you really understand the speed of each planet then you will think that one day it will collapse one day it will you know collide and collapse right so but krishna is telling everything is coming from me there are so many scientists they are trying to understand how this universe came right they have found so many philosophies saying that proved they try to prove and they said that you know whatever i found is wrong and another scientist comes and says something else okay we will going forward we will see so in this way if we all are coming from the our source krishna then why we are not understanding our source why is it not easy why krishna is telling that why one who is trying out of thousands of such people one person only will try to learn about me and out of thousand of such people who is trying to learn about me only one person will learn about me and one person will only come to me why is he saying this he is saying because we are in material world and this material world is appointed by krishna krishna swarn energy and we must have seen in the movies of uh, jesus and sita right christian movies uh, bible some based on bible some movies so they show that there is a satan and there is a god and the god and the satan fight each other and the god is the enemy for satan and satan is the enemy for god but god is that everything is coming from me even the satan is coming from me <laughs> for us because it is not letting us go out it's like a jail right it is not letting us go out of this and meeting our father and our source so that's why krishna is telling why we are not able to understand here दैवी हेशा गुणमयी मम माया दुरत्यय मामेव ये प्रपद्यन्ते माया मेतां तरन्ति ते रमेश कैन एनीबॉडी रीड दिस डिवाइन एनर्जी ऑफ माइंड कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ द थ्री मोस्ट मटेरियल नेचर इज फॉर सम but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond me okay so krishna is telling that the material energy is the divine energy he is not telling the material energy is my enemy just like how we see that the god and enemy satan <laughs> okay satan will not let you go to the dark god right satan will stop you going to god satan will not let you to do devotional service to the god 
because it will stop. That's why we say that the Saitan is enemy for God. But whereas Krishna is material energy is not letting you go and approach Krishna. Why? Because this divine energy is of mind and consisting of three modes. What are those three modes? Three modes. Material energy consists of three modes. What are those three modes? Those three modes are mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance. Mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance. Mode of goodness means Sattva Guna. Mode of passion means Rajoguna. Mode of ignorance means Tamoguna. These are the three Gunas we are under the influence of these three Gunas. We think that everything that we are doing is because of our own knowledge. I am the Karta, I am the Karma, I am the Kriya. This is what we think. If I am not there, my office would have been closed by now. <laughs> if I am not there, I don't think so this center can run. If I am not there, I don't think so my family can be you know, together. If I am not there, I don't think so anything can be achieved. If I am not there, no profit, no benefit, no gain, no loss, nothing. I am the reason for everything. I am the reason for all good and all bad. This is what we think. Right? Everyone thinks. But Krishna is telling, you are not the doer. You can see here, there is a puppet and the puppet is played by somebody else above them. And the puppet is played. For us to see the puppet is playing, we think that the puppet is playing independently. But there is someone who is actually controlling the puppet by the threads. Okay. We don't see them. Who is the controller? We only see the puppets. Our hands are moving, our legs are moving, we are doing actions, all because of the influence of the modes. And those three modes are Sattva Guna, Rajoguna and Tamaguna. Can you see these three modes? Three ladies, beautiful ladies. They are very beautiful. <laughs> right? But they are attracting us. <laughs> and they are binding us. They are binding us and we cannot, we think that we are free. Right? We are free. We have a freedom. But we are bound by something else. That's why Krishna is telling we are not able to surrender to Krishna. What does that mean? Krishna is telling I have appointed somebody who is not letting you to come and surrender to me. Right? So when Krishna has appointed somebody, nominated somebody, so he, she must be doing their job perfectly, right? Otherwise, Krishna could have not given that job to them. He could have given to somebody who is perfectly, who can execute perfectly that. So that material energy is Durga. That material energy is Durga. So whatever Kalika Devi we say, right? Kali. The Kali Mata is this material nature, right? Parvati Devi. Parvati is this material nature. And this material nature consists of three modes. Okay. And because of these three modes influence, we are not coming out of this material world. We are not understanding Krishna. That is what Krishna is telling. And who are all those such people who don't actually understand about Krishna? Who are all those such people who don't even surrender to Krishna? Okay. So Krishna is telling that in the next verse. Tamam dushkruti no muda prapadhyante naradhamam Maya Pahruta Jnana Asuram Bhavama Shritaha Can anybody read? Okay. Krishna is telling that there are four types of people who don't surrender unto me. Okay. If we are not among those four, let us check. <laughs> okay. So Krishna is telling there are four types of people. The first person who don't surrender unto me is Mudha. Mudha means foolish. That's what Krishna is saying. 
first line can you see namam dushkrutino mudha mudha means foolish grossly foolish that means a person who is a fool don't understand me don't come and surrender to me okay who is that fool you can see in the first photo that i have given they get up early in the morning they get ready for the office they travel all the way for one one and a half hour on the local trains local bus and on autos and cabs they go to office sit for 8 hours 9 hours 10 hours and in the evening 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock they will leave office and they will take local train again and they will reach office home and they will have some food and they will watch some tv movie and then they will sleep and next day morning what they will do next day morning next day morning anything different they are doing huh these are mudas these are mudas they don't have god in their life they don't have god in their life they don't understand god they think work is worship they think work is worship so when you think work is worship krishna is telling you are muda there is beyond work something you have to be spiritual but you may be thinking that probably i have seen even iskon devotees are going to office working coming back and then sitting sleeping everything they are also doing why are you not saying that they are not muras huh? they are not muras <laughs> why because their priority is something else okay we all are in this material world struggling to survive with the problems that we have and with the family we have we all have to take care of our family that is our responsibility and taking care of the family is the responsibility that is given to us by who krishna because krishna is the source of the material energy to me to you to everybody krishna is the source my son i got it only because krishna's mercy okay so if i don't take care of the mercy that is given to me by krishna then krishna will be angry so the my consciousness should be that i am taking care of my family for for the pleasure of krishna Right? If I have given you something, probably this is very costly. Keep it carefully with you, and you throw it away. Now what will happen? How will I feel? Ah, I'll be very angry at you. Prabhu, I already told you this is a gold coin. You have treated it like a brass coin <laughs> or a copper coin, and you have thrown it. And I'll be very angry. And what will I? What will I say? I don't ever give you any more gold coin. Right? So Krishna has given me a valuable family, valuable life, which I can use. I can. you know take care of and then i can please krishna right okay? krishna if krishna is pleased of our service then obviously krishna will show more mercy on us right so so the day to day activities that i am performing in my daily life is to please krishna not to please my senses so morning i get up i chant i do deity worship so more than doing anything else in my day so what is priority for me is my office priority is my material activities priority is taking care of family priority or worshiping god is priority if you have 10 works that you need to perform in a day which one you will perform first all 10 you can't do so one thing you have to start with so which one you will start with one which is with high priority you will start with if you can start devotional service as a first thing that in your life in the morning as soon as soon as you get up then you are giving the highest priority to the devotional service than anything else you are doing so just like all others you are also getting up you are also going to office you are also coming back from office you are also taking care of your kids you are also eating you are also meeting you are also meeting you are also sleeping but the priority for you is not this the priority for you is devotional service morning you are getting up having a bath worshiping the god chanting doing all type of devotional activities it may be for one hour it may be for half an hour it may be for two hours depends on the individuals 
but we are giving priority to the devotional activities so we are not mudas and as soon as we get a paycheck end of the month what do we think krishna has given me this this belongs to krishna so i offer this to krishna everything that i eat i offer to krishna everything that i wear i offer to krishna everything that i enjoy before i enjoy i offer to krishna so we are not mudas okay that's why krishna is telling those who is grossly foolish means those who are engaged materially day in day out are called mudas and they don't come and surrender unto me right and the second type of people who don't surrender unto me are what naradhama lowest of mankind who is lowest of mankind the person who has all type of habits whatever i said apart from that some people will do something more what will they do evening after 6 they will go to bar they will have two pecks they will come back home they will beat wife <laughs> or they will have ecstasy in the road they will sleep on the road right they will dance on the roads and they will have smoking habits drinking habits prostitution all these things they will these are all called lowest of mankind okay they eat whatever they like they don't even think whether i am eating a human being or eating a animal or eating vegetarian food or anything they simply eat okay so before even eating we don't even think that what am i eating what am i enjoying where am i going what am i doing where am i leading to how many knows every action that we are doing has a equal and opposite reaction we don't think about reaction we only perform action what will happen we become naradhama okay so in one hand bottle and another hand cigarette this is the life of a naradhamas okay so these people also think that i am already enjoying why i need krishna If I go and uh, eat Krishna Prasadam, can I get this ecstasy that I get by taking two, three pecks? Huh? No. So they, 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 those people think that I'm already in bliss. I'm already enjoying. I'm already happy. I don't need anything more than this. Okay. They'll be already flying, right? So that's why you don't make me to fly anywhere else. I'm already flying this. So these are all Naradhamas. lowest of mankind and these people also don't surrender unto krishna and the third category of people they are not just stolen by illusion maya okay they are all intelligent people they are also sattvic people okay they eat good they do good but they don't believe in god how this uh, nature came they will say some physics formulas or maybe you know something they will say. krishna is not the source for this material energy krishna is not source for this anything else they don't know anything beyond what they can see okay they started doing research about this material nature and they went to moon they went to mars okay they don't know that there are many more planets than that which they don't even discover right even forget about moon and mars they don't even know about the places in the earth right so when a person who is living on the earth does not know anything about the earth try to know about the moon try to know about the mars and try to launch rockets okay and they say that i found mars i found moon i found other planets so these are the people who are having knowledge but their knowledge is stolen by illusion these are all in illusion they don't understand that there is a source for every material element that we are seeing here every material you know planets or maybe the universe is is created by krishna okay instead of surrendering to krishna they will try to discover many other things they will try to find out and they say that i am the founder of this i am the discoverer of this i am the inventor of this and they will claim for patents 
the claim that why patents are required otherwise huh? so how did we find pet how did we get that knowledge to you know get to some patent we get that knowledge only because krishna has given us if you can acknowledge that then you are at a real you know platform otherwise our knowledge is stolen by illusion these are the third kind of people who don't surrender to krishna they find out reasons for everything that they can see okay and fourth type of people are atheistic people atheists they don't believe god they don't understand god even if we say there is a god who is god can you show me god if i cannot see god god is not there okay i have given you one example Stephen Hawking. He publicly declared that there is no God. This universe is coming out of what? Huh? This universe is coming because of some big, you know, big bang. Okay. So you tell me one thing: if there is a Diwali festival that you are celebrating, and you blast something, and something beautiful gets created out of the blast. this nature is beautiful or ugly can this beautiful nature be created by a big bang no if you if you in the, if you if you fire few crackers at home you know you have to hire three four ladies to clean up <laughs> to again make it you know beautiful as it was earlier right so but he invented he discovered that this material universe has got created by big bang and this big bang theory he has you know proposed and he said there is no god and god has made, not created a, this universe and it has got created on its own on its own and at one point of time what will happen this material universe will go into the black hole then it will disappear then later at the end of his age what he mentioned in his autobiography he mentioned that what about the theory that i found big bang theory black hole theory everything is trash this all is my speculation okay there is no evidence there is no proof okay there is no proof for this this all is what i thought there is no basis for this so when he mentioned that you know everything that he found is uh, out of his own speculation governments have poured in lots and lots of money for his discoveries where did that go it's all our money right it's all waste so such as atheistic people talk about the universe and at the end before leaving the body they say that whatever i told has no base okay and we all take that as a science today and we all learn about it and we all write exams about it okay and then we pass get 100 marks 200 marks for the false statements that we write in exams and even the person who has written about it he mentioned that there is no base for this and this is false he mentioned and we learn the false we write the false and we get 100% this is very unfortunate right so these are the atheistic people who are like a demons a demon is not someone who is having horns on his head who is having teeth you know long on his mouth okay a demon is someone who is opposing god anyone who is looking like us opposing god is a demon okay just like the person that i am showing here okay okay so many of us can think that we are not among these four that's the reason we are here we are we surrender to krishna and we are hearing what krishna said right we are not among here and who are those people who can surrender to krishna there are four types of people who can surrender to krishna chaturvidha bhajante mam jana sukruti no arjuna ato jignasur arthadhi jnani cha bharata arshabha Oh, best among the Brahm Bharatas, 
four kinds of pious men began to render devotional service unto me the distressed the desire of wealth desirer of wealth the inquisitive and he who is searching for the knowledge of the absolute okay these are the four type of people who surrender unto krishna so in the previous was krishna said that there are four types of people who don't surrender unto me here krishna is telling four type of people who can surrender unto me who are those four first one is who is in distress artho arthi means arthi means people who need support who need Uh, help. Okay, so the best example that I have given from the Gajendra. Gajendra was in distress. Gajendra need help. He went into the river where crocodile caught his leg, and he could not come out of the river. He tried honey. He he asked his family members to help him, and his family members could not help. And he tried himself pulling the leg from the crocodile. He could not help himself. Then he asked many people. could not help then he asked god god you are the only one who can save me there is no one else who can save me i tried everything what draupadi did it what draupadi did yes what draupadi did when dushyantana was trying to destroy draupadi first asked her husbands help me her husbands are powerful people in this world they can defeat anybody so is it difficult to defeat kauravas is it difficult to kill duryodhana and dushyashana in that uh, false uh, situation no but uh, her five legends could not husbands could not support uh, draupadi then what did she do she asked uh, bhishma she asked bhishma she asked uh, um dronacharya they also could not help then when her husbands and when her relations when her spiritual guru and nobody helps what she what did she do she tried to help herself she was holding her sari tightly so that dushyasana cannot you know pull her pull her sari and could she save herself no. then she was she when she was holding with her hands she could not save from dushyantana so she was also holding with her teeth she realized that nobody can help and i also cannot help myself then what did she do she released her hands lifted her hands then she called krishna govinda come and save me then what happened only krishna said so people who are in distress also approach krishna we may be thinking that we can save ourselves we may be thinking that the relations that we have by looking at home we feel proud of whatever we possess we feel proud right today so we think that these are all going to save us no in the past we were saved by whatever they possess okay in the time they lost everything in the time they lost their bodies right in the time they lost everything they acquired nobody could say so we have to surrender to krishna the person who realizes that there is no one else who can save me only krishna can save me then i will go and surrender to krishna that's why we all you know go to tirupati and give hey okay why we do that so that krishna can save us <laughs> okay and the second type of person can surrender unto krishna is desirer of wealth adharthi okay if you want money you will go to krishna you want something right i want visa to america there is a visa balaji in hyderabad <laughs> so so for one one reason one one god is there right there are so many so especially we go you go to so and so temple now you were this kind of desire will go <laughs> you were this kind of desire will be fulfilled okay so why we go to god why we go to god because we have desires material desires we want to fulfill our material desires so we go to god krishna is telling 
there are people who come and approach me also for fulfilling their material benefits okay these are the second type of category example i have given dhruva maharaj you know dhruva dhruva maharaj was a great king right hmm? so dhruva he was not allowed to sit on his father's lap right so then he said i'm challenging you i need a kingdom which is bigger than your father's father <laughs> okay means he's he's challenging to his father that i should take his father is manu and his father's father is manu and father 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 is brahmadev okay so he challenged that i want a kingdom which is bigger than brahma so then where should he go whom should he ask vishnu he should ask right because you have 1 lakh rupees i come and ask you 2 lakhs will you give so brahmadev if i go and ask brahmadev i want a bigger kingdom he will say take my kingdom right other than that i cannot give anything he will say bigger than my kingdom i cannot give if you want bigger than his kingdom he have to go to bigger person than that <laughs> and that is vishnu so so dhruva maharaj went and uh, approached krishna and he did the tapasya for five months the austerity that he has performed okay lord was happy he pleased lord and the lord came and he is given him dhruva loka right dhruva planet he has given and the dhruva planet is bigger than brahma loka it is almost like a vaikuntha planet okay even at the time of annihilation pralaya dhruva planet will still remain brahma loka also will go brahma also will go but dhruva loka will not if some material benefits then also we will approach krishna and krishna is telling here it's good that you come and approach me even if you want a fulfill material desires okay and the third type of people who are surrendering to krishna are inquisitive about krishna they don't have bhakti they are inquisitive to know about what is happening here they are inquisitive to know about why they are dancing after having prashana they are inquisitive to know about what will they do on sunday evening 4 to 6 <laughs> they are inquisitive they want to know what is happening here they don't want to really develop love for krishna right but at least they are trying to understand what we are doing right that is also greatness right so that's why krishna that's why there might be people who are coming here to know what is happening here that's why krishna is telling at least those type of people also will come and reach me okay and there are fourth type of people who will come and approach me or for searching for the absolute truth these are a higher level persons compared to all these four people these are gnanis okay these are gnanis so the example is kumara kumara so four kumaras were gnanis they don't know about krishna they don't know about the personal form of lord vishnu they only know is impersonal brahma the light the fulgence they know they worship them that does not mean that they hate krishna that does not mean they hate the personal form of god but they are attracted to the impersonal form and they worship that okay so that's why krishna is telling and i am not impersonal i have a form i have my abode i live in goloka vrindavan i have gopis gopikas i have cows and sahasra lakshmi is uh, you know serving me thousands of uh, lakshmi devis are serving krishna so how can krishna be formless so the people who are in the search of knowledge and end up in the in, in impersonal brahman stage they don't look beyond that impersonal brahman right they don't look beyond that impersonal brahman so krishna is hiding himself behind the impersonal brahman right if you put a torch light in the darkness can you see me you can only see the light there is nothing behind the light can be seen in the same way krishna cannot be seen to the personal a devotee who is worshiping the personal form of krishna can only understand krishna can only see krishna that's why he is telling 
uh, impersonal brahman worshippers are the topmost persons among the four people that he is telling here that does not mean that they are greater than devotees because they don't really know about krishna that's why krishna is telling here bahunam janma namante jnana van man prapadyate इंपर्सनल ब्रह्मन takes many births it's not that you know impersonal brahman is a topmost transcendentalist right he is in the path of transition from the material world to the spiritual world but that does not mean that he is going into the spiritual world as soon as he leave this body from this life bahu naam janma naam ante after many months so jnani although he is great among four people he will also take many births okay and then what will happen if he come across some devotee like us and who tells that baba you are taking so many births so many deaths okay because you don't understand the personal form of the lord so you worship personal form of the lord if a devotee tells him then what will he do oh is it i have taken many births now it is time for me to start worshiping personal brahma not impersonal brahma then he will start worshiping krishna in two handed form or maybe vishnu in four handed form then he will realize god then he will become a pure devotee then he will go back to spiritual world bahu naam janma naam ante how many lives there is no count unless otherwise you understand the personal form of the lord you continue taking the births and deaths and you will be taking the births and deaths and suffering in this material world and live like a jnani live like a jnani that's what krishna is telling here that's why krishna has clearly said that there are four type of people who don't surrender unto me there are four type of people who can surrender unto me there are types of people out of the people who surrender unto me one person is jnani who is better than among all, better among all others and that jnani also take many paths to really understand my personal form and come to my abode okay and there can be people who don't understand krishna who don't understand impersonal brahman what will happen to them right there can be people right it's not that only three categories one non devotee one devotee and there can be third type of people also and the third type of people are those who actually think that you know demigod worshipers devata worshipers devata worshipers are also having the faith they are also pious people they are worshiping maybe vinayaka ganesha they are worshiping kali mata they are worshiping lord shiva they are worshiping brahma they are worshiping kumara swami they are worshiping x y z demigods what will happen to them are they really in devotion are they also going to achieve the same benefit that who surrender unto krishna so for them krishna is going to tell about next verse kama istai stai hruta jnana prapadhyante anya devata antam niyamam hastaya prakrutya niyata svaya those whose intelligence has been stolen by the material desires surrender on to the demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worshiping according to their own natures krishna is telling there are different category of people they don't surrender on to me they don't understanding me at least as a supreme per, uh, super uh, sorry impersonal brahman they go and surrender on to demigods why they will surrender unto demigods he is telling here that they worship demigods for fulfilling their material desires but please understand krishna has 
you know, created this material world, Krishna has also created demigods. Why? This material nature has to be ruled. When a government is formed, prime minister is first formed. Then he will nominate some ministers. And he will nominate ministers for different, different portfolios. And he will say, you take care of this, you take care of this. This is the way of ruling, right? Krishna, when he created this material universe, and he has to rule this material universe, and he alone cannot do that. He alone does not want to do that. He has to nominate. Right? Some more portfolios, some ministries, there is no person available. Who will take care of those port portfolios? The minister will keep with him. Right? So for the portfolios to which minister is not there, a person is not nominated, then such a portfolio is kept with prime minister. Right? In the same way, Krishna has created demigods. You can see here in the picture. Topmost Krishna, Krishna has created these demigods and the demigods are there meant for ruling the material universe. One one God for one one purpose. And the people on the earth will worship the demigods, get the benefits from this material nature and cooperate each other. Then live so that you can develop love for Krishna and go back to Krishna. So you have to understand the top two. So when I say, uh, when Krishna is telling that the you know, demigods are part and parcel of me. So if you worship a part and parcel and you don't worship the source, what will happen? There is a tree. Tree has roots. Tree has trunk. Tree has branches. Tree has leaves. And you want to take care of the tree. You want to serve the tree. You have to give water to leaves. You have to give water to branches. You have to give water to trunk. You have to give water to where? Oh, or if you want to get an energy for your hand. So you want to feed your hand? Or where will you feed? Whether you want energy for the leg or a hand or a ear or a eyes or a mouth or anywhere you want an energy, you have to feed your stomach only. Right? You can't say that, you know, my hand needs energy, so I'll start feeding my hand. Right? This is not possible. Hand will say, you fool, you are worshipping me, go and worship your stomach so that I can get the energy. So if you really want to take care of the tree, you have to give water to the roots. So there are 33 crore devatas. You all know. And you want to worship all these devatas. Do you worship, say that, you know, I am a Devi God worshipper. I will worship one devata. I will worship two devatas. Is it possible for you to worship 33 crore devatas? No? Then, you are only worshipping 10 devatas, 20 devatas, 30 devatas. How many worship? So, remaining 33 crores devatas will become what? Dissatisfied with you. Right? Obviously, right? You are going and worshipping Indra. You are not worshipping Varuna. Then what will Varuna say? <laughs> right? And Agni Deva will say that if you are not worshipping me, what will happen? If at all you want to worship, you have to worship all Devas. Or else you go and worship Krishna so that it is equal to worshipping all, all Devas. That's what Krishna is telling. Okay? So these people, they don't understand the root. They will go and worship hand, leg, nose, ears, Part and parcel of Krishna. Part and parcel of our body. Okay. So you worship only the part and parcel and you don't worship the root of that, source of that, then it is an incomplete worship. Right? You keep giving the water to the, you know, only leaves. Leaves will become green. Leaves will become, what will happen? What will happen? Five days you give only water to leaves. What will happen? Leaves will be nourishing. Huh? It will become dry. It will become slowly orange color, then red color, then powder, powder it will. Right? So, Krishna is telling that people who worship demigods are less intelligent people. People who worship demigods are less intelligent people. Satata sraddhaya yuktas tasya aradhani mhate
लभते चाधा कामाइवाड and we get our material desires fulfilled right we all are thinking that we worship a demigod maybe you want a beautiful wife so uh, you will go and worship some demigod maybe whom whom should we worship mata ji for a beautiful wife beautiful husband for beautiful husband ladies do vratas right <laughs> so so krishna is telling even if you go and worship demigod and your desires are fulfilled only by me not by the demi just like how you want a road in your uh, colony you go and talk to your uh, collector or maybe a mla but what will mla do mla will do he will go back and then he will say prime minister or maybe road and rnd minister saying that in my constituency in one of the village roads are not there and these roads have to be developed he will tell to rnd minister because he is not having money from his pocket to put and then you know play the roads okay he will go and tell to rnb minister and what rnb minister will do rnb minister will go and uh, talk to prime minister and say or maybe finance minister and say that you know allocate some funds in the next financial budget then using that budget we will use it for the roads then what will happen that will be put in the budget and the panel of ministry will approve that and the prime minister will approve that and the funds will come to rnb and from the rnb the funds will go to mla and the mla will put will put the road then what we feel like we feel like we asked mla mla has given us so what is happening behind mla as lot of process approval process we don't know about this so krishna is telling here that even if you worship a demi god your material desires are fulfilled only through me not by the demi gods demi god is an instrument okay so one who understands this what will they do what if you don't go to an mla and go to prime minister and ask that you know i need roads in my village what will happen he will say sanction right in one shot he will sanction if you go to mla probably right so so the worship of demigods is just like going and bribing a collector and an of officers right officers get salary from where government right the collector gets salary from ias officer gets salary from government and the government gives salary for ias officer and we go to ias officer and say that you know i want something take this money and do it what is that called bribe and what is the punishment for a bribe huh he will be put behind the bars right for some days but there will be some appropriate punishment for the sin that you have done right so in the same way if you worship a demi god and don't worship god and then you don't pay the tax to government and you go and give the money to the collector and say that you fulfill my needs and collector will take that and he will do that then what will happen you are bribing a demi god you are bribing a demi god that is not accepted that is not the way that we have to do that is a sin this is also sin if that is a punishable offense this is also punishable offense right so that's why krishna is telling that one who understands that i am the source of the demi gods and even if you worship the demi gods and your desires are fulfilled only by me through the medium of demi gods who will directly come and surrender unto me instead of going to demi gods Lord Krishna alone bestows all the benedictions attributed to the worship of all the demi gods. Okay, so indirectly you are worshiping Krishna, not direct worship. You may be saying that indirect worship and direct worship. What does what is the difference? The difference is a huge. So that's why Krishna says that you know if you worship demi gods, you will go to demi god planets. If you go worship forefathers, you will go to forefathers families. If you worship Bhuta Pratas, you will go to Bhuta Pratas families, and if you worship me, you will come to me. 
so you you might be saying that all gods are same all gods are same worship this god worship that god no difference everything is same but krishna is ruling out this bhagavad gita is ruling out this bhagavad gita is not teaching that bhagavad gita is saying that according to your nature you will develop love for certain demigod and that love for demigod is developed in you because of it krishna is telling because krishna is sitting in our heart as a paramatma and he will fulfill all our desires and i want to love somebody krishna will help us because krishna wants us to be purified by us approaching a demigod we might be purified and we will be taken back we will be some or other day we will be realizing krishna right instead of going on the streets and you know bars and uh, pubs at least you are going to demigod temple is better right that's why krishna says love shiva love uh, ganesha love kali at least you do this for shit you may not be a top notch yogi you may not be a top notch devotee but at least some or other day you will realize who am i right so so even brahmadev when he came he brahmadev was trying to understand krishna when he was in vrindavan when when he was in vrindavan he was trying to play with cowherd boys right he was playing with them he is eating from their plates we all are doing bhoga and offering to krishna but what krishna is doing krishna is going eating from the juta plates <laughs> of the cowherd boys then brahmadev was also bewildered and he thought what is this krishna is doing is he really god he is going and eating the remnants of his uh, uh, friends we all are uh, you know so pious and we are preparing food morning we are getting up we are uh, taking bath and then preparing food we are not even tasting it before even offering to krishna krishna we are offering in that such a ritualistic way right but krishna is bhav bhav grahi janatna right so he is taking like this so brahma has got a doubt so from brahmadev brahmadev from brahmalok all the way he came here and he tried to you know um, um understand krishna so it comes in 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam brahma vimohana lila okay i think some other day we will discuss about brahma vimohana lila so in this verse krishna is telling that oh arjuna as the supreme personality of the godhead i know everything that has happened in the past and that is happening in the present and all the things that are yet to come okay i also know all living entities but me no one knows okay so krishna is telling that i know past i know present i know future i know about all of you but no one knows about me even a top most living entity in this material world is brahmadev brahmadev cannot understand bhagwan what can we understand is it possible for us to understand krishna when brahmadev himself cannot understand that's why in brahma samhita he says krishna so sarva karana karana and um, his potencies are unlimited he can't understand so people might be thinking that krishna is a mystic having a mystic powers and he can do some mystic activities maybe he has done some yogic practice so he got mystic uh, powers and he killed so many demons krishna just born he killed demons can anybody kill demons just after he take birth in the days in few days in one day not possible that means krishna has not developed the qualities that he possessed practice it is there by birth it is there before he take birth in the devaki's womb okay so that's why krishna is telling that people don't understand people don't understand me that's why reading vedas does not mean that you understood me that's why initially i started with the seeding of prabhupada incident there are chaturvedi dvivedi trivedi came and started talking about the god when prabhupada asked who is god they could not tell who is god reading vedas does not mean that you know god having knowledge does not mean that you have a you know the god that's why in this material world we are not understanding krishna although we are intelligence that's why we are suffering in this material 
जरामरण मोक्षाया इंटेलिजेंस पर्सन हू आर एंडेवरिंग फॉर द लिबरेशन फ्रॉम द ओल्ड एज एंड डेथ टेक रेफ्यूज इन मी इन डिवोशनल सर्विस दे आर एक्चुअली Brahman, because they entirely know everything about the transcendental activities. Intelligent person who are endeavoring for liberation, liberation from what? Liberation from janma, mrutu, jara, vyadi. Krishna is talking about birth, death, disease, and old age. If you can be liberated from this, you are an intelligent. You might be saying that I'm an intelligent person. I solve so many problems, but can you overcome your old age? Can you overcome your death? Can you overcome your uh, diseases? Even doctor cannot overcome these diseases, right? If one who cannot overcome these problems is not an intelligent, so we have to try to overcome these things. He is an intelligent, and that intelligent is liberated. Okay, so. what will they do they will surrender to me the only way for you to get liberation is to surrender unto krishna there is no other way okay hiranya kashipu ravana su have done lot of austerities and thousands of years they have done austerities for brahma for shiva could they get liberated could they save themselves have they become eternal no what did happen they were proud of what they possess from the austerity that they have performed from the benedictions that they have got from brahma and shiva and they they are fallen and at the end god ke god has taken an incarnation as you know varaha avataram or maybe narsimha avataram rama avataram and then he killed those demons okay so we all don't believe in god and act like a demon and worship gods and worship and do the yagnas tapasyas and think that we got materially possessed with so much and uh, there is no one who can defeat us but krishna is telling you are not intelligent because you could not defeat your janma mrutyu jara vyadi right so one has to liberate so everything so the person who no understand this and surrender son to krishna can get liberated and such a person is real intelligent he only does transcendental activities he will not do material activities his activities are transcendent so that is the summary of this particular chapter 7th chapter so what we learned in this chapter is krishna stated his preferences between the dhyana yoga versus bhakti yoga right in 6th chapter we have seen what did he say yogi naam api sarvesham madh dena antaratmana okay so who surrenders unto me who worship me is the best yogi then krishna then he said that i will tell you about me right so krishna told us to hear if you can hear if you can develop the qualities of hearing you can know about me you can understand me okay so then what did he say out of thousands of people only one person can understand out of thousands of people only one person can attempt to understand out of thousands of attempted people only one can understand okay then everything that rests on me just like a pearl resting on the stream okay so the source of material and the source of the spiritual energies is krishna right then there are four kinds of people who don't surrender unto him there are four kinds of people who surrender unto krishna and there are people who surrender unto demigods right so krishna said that and the people who surrender unto krishna is a rare soul sudurlabha krishna said right what did he say the person who surrenders unto me is a rare and he is a mahatma yes define mahatma we all have mahatma so many 
Mahatma is not the one who is a freedom fighter. Mahatma is the one who surrender to Krishna. If you can surrender to Krishna, if you can surrender to the lotus feet of Krishna, you are Mahatma. That's what Krishna said. Such a Mahatma is very rare. One among thousands. Okay? That's all. So, such a Mahatma can be attained by chanting the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. So, we'll take questions if you have anybody. Anybody have any questions, we'll take for two minutes and then we'll stop the class for today. And then uh, next week we will see how to attain Supreme Person. Now we have seen who is Supreme Personality and why we are not able to approach him. Next week we will see attaining Supreme Personality. Okay. That means we are going deep into the Bhakti. We are going deep into the understanding of Krishna. Okay. So how we can realize Krishna, how we can see Krishna. What is Krishna all about? How we can really reach Krishna? So we understood Krishna is the Supreme. Uh, so now our knowledge should advance beyond what we learn now. So then Krishna speaks about how to attain him. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, one hour, one and a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So for